Hello there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode. And in today's episode, we're going to take a look at some organic chemistry and we're going to discuss acid catalyzed epoxide openings. So, epoxides are a type of cyclic ether, it's a three membered ring, and they can undergo both acid and base openings. And the acid ones tend to be a little more confusing for students simply because they can behave in different manners depending on the substitution pattern. So we want to take a look at the stereochemistry as well as the regiochemistry involved and just get a general sense of acid catalyzed epoxide openings. So before I start the video, remember to leave a like because it really helps us with the YouTube algorithms. It promotes our content and we can continue to bring excellent free content for you for your learning. If you subscribe, hit the little notification bell and you will be up to date as we release content throughout your semester. So let's go ahead and get started here. The first thing I want to do is just give a statement or two on epoxide and acid catalyzed epoxide openings. So again, if we take a look at what an epoxide actually is, we're looking at some sort of organic structure that is a three-membered ring, and at the top of that three-membered ring is an oxygen, okay, where R just means rest of the molecule here. So epoxides are subjected to acidic cleavage just like regular ethers. So if we were to take a normal ether, such as R, O, R, Okay, this would be subjected to acidic cleavage if we used a strong enough acid and usually a little bit of heating. Now, epoxides can also undergo the acid cleavage, but epoxides are going to react even faster, and that's due to the fact that they have severe ring strain. So they become more reactive because they're less stable. So if you take a look at the epoxide functionality, you've got a three-membered ring here, and one of the characteristics of a three-membered ring is that there are 60 degree bond angles. And when you have such strain on the molecule, it is going to end up collapsing very readily. You have to only offer it the mildest of conditions or opportunities, and it will usually take that in order to alleviate that bond angle strain. So that's one of the reasons why epoxides are so reactive. And we can use that to our advantage in organic chemistry because if we would like to create a very reactive intermediate that could potentially lead us to a product of some sort, epoxides can be a good option if they fit the bill. So let's take a general look at an acid catalyzed epoxide opening. And I want you to remember the term catalyzed is referring to the fact that the acid is a catalyst. So when we have a catalyst, a catalyst should always regenerate itself at the end of a reaction, you should always be able to get it back. So you only need a small amount of it. Now, let's go ahead and create an epoxide for ourselves. So we'll use a five membered ring, and then we will draw an epoxide coming off of this ring. We'll go ahead and draw the epoxide coming out of the plane here. So instead of it being double dashed, we have double wedge here. And that just means that the hydrogens that are implied here would be the dashes coming off to the bottom of the plane. All right, so keep in mind epoxides as far as their stereochemistry when we start out, they have to both be either wedged or both be dashed, meaning the epoxide can only exist on one side of the plane. It has to be cis. It cannot take a trans stereochemistry um, as far as the ring structure is concerned. So with acid catalyzed opening, all we're going to need is an acid. We can use, for example, H3O plus for this first example here. And I'm gonna draw it this way, okay, just to give ourselves access to that hydrogen. So this is H3O plus, but I want to show what's going to happen to that first bond. So the epoxide will send a lone pair over to grab the acidic hydrogen, which will then liberate water. Okay, so what we end up with, and keep in mind the epoxide is going to be similar to the bromonium ion when we study alkene chemistry. Okay, so what we end up with is a charged three-membered ring intermediate, highly reactive, like the bromonium or the chlorinium ion. And we now have a proton that's kind of at the tip or the head of the epoxide ring. 
right here. And there's a positive charge associated with this. So that's good as far as reactivity is concerned. It was already reactive as a three-member ring, but now it's going to be even more reactive due to that charge. It's going to be looking for electrons to come and alleviate it quickly. Okay, so remember, we just liberated water a minute ago from the acid. So water can play the same role. And since we're looking for a catalyst, meaning we have to get it to return, water will come back into play in a second here to revive itself into the H3O plus form. But right now, water is going to act as a nucleophile. And when it does this, it needs to come in using a backside attack. So in other words, when water is going to come in, it has to come in on the opposite side of the epoxide. So where those hydrogens are, those dashes, that's the side of the plane that the water is going to attack from. And that's because the epoxide is locked into that uh, sterically large or bulky um, situation, right? So we can pick out, it doesn't matter in this case, but it will in a couple minutes, which side we attack. So let's go ahead and attack the bottom side here using a backside attack. And when we do that, we also need to open the epoxide ring. So these electrons that are forming this bottom part of the epoxide ring will be sent over to the oxygen that's participating in the epoxide ring. And this is the cleavage or the opening. So from here, we're going to have one alcohol at the top, and then we'll have a water that will shortly become an alcohol at the bottom site. So let's go ahead and draw that intermediate. So up here, keep in mind, the hydrogen and the OH are in the same positioning. So nothing happened to this bond right here. It's the same. It was this bond that ended up releasing itself. And so that's going to look like that right up there. And then down here, the water came in on the opposite side. So now where the hydrogen originally was, that's where we find the new water that has added itself as a nucleophile. Now this water came in as water. It didn't come in as an alcohol. So we're going to add the plus charge right here. Keep its lone pair. And then the hydrogen was bumped up during this attack and now is above the plane. Because of that backside attack, we get the inversion behavior there. Okay, now to finish this off, as I mentioned a minute ago, water will come back and will regenerate itself as an acid catalyst. So it will grab one of these hydrogens to reform H3O+, plus. so we've now regenerated our catalyst, and the electrons here will go over to the remaining oxygen. So what we end up with is a final product that has what is known as an anti-addition. So anti referring to the stereochemistry, and in anti-addition, you have an attack on the back side, so you get one addition on the front plane and one on the back of the plane and you get the trans type of chemistry that's occurring there, or stereochemistry. Okay, so the final product here would be the top portion of the diol, di meaning two, all meaning alcohol, so two alcohols. The top part of the diol would be up in the plane, and the other diol would be facing below the plane. So this is an anti-diol addition. And that is how an acid-catalyzed epoxide opening would occur. Now, what about regiochemistry? So in this case, we stated it didn't matter which of the two carbons the uh, water was coming into attack. But sometimes it is going to matter. And that's what we need to take a look at. What region would potentially be attacked? So it depends. If you only have primary and secondary sites present, SN2-like behavior will take hold, and the less substituted site will be favored during the attack, so sterics will be avoided. If you have a tertiary site present, any tertiary site at all, then SN1-like behavior will dominate, and a strong partial positive carbocation will build up for attack. Okay, so some people talk about Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov addition. And the truth is that there's a bit of SN2 and SN1-like behavior or nature, and it's sort of a sliding scale depending on what substituents are there. So notice I said a partial positive carbocation, not an actual full carbocation that's going to occur here. Okay, and there's usually a mixture of products. However, one will be favored over another depending on what's present. So let's take a brief look at what we're talking about here. 
So for the first example, let's consider when only primary or secondary sites are present. So we can just draw uh, relatively simple epoxide. We don't need to take up too much room here. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll just put hydrogens here, right? And then I still need an additional hydrogen here. So if I were to look at this, I would classify the site or this carbon right here over on the left as being secondary. And this carbon right here on the right would be primary. So this is a case where only secondary and primary carbons would be present. So let's go ahead and use another acid. This time we'll use HCl. It would behave in a similar type fashion. So what's gonna happen is first of all, the epoxide is going to grab the acidic hydrogen and the remaining part of the molecule will go off. So we're going to protonate that. Now once this happens, the epoxide will be ready for opening with the chloride. Now the question is where will the chloride attack? So the chloride is going to attack the less hindered position, meaning the less substituted position, and that's because only primary and secondary carbons are present. That's the rule that we talked about up top. So here's the chloride that was originally released. And when we have this, it's going to come in and attack this position right here because primary is less sterically hindered than secondary. So this would be the site of attack, not the other site. And the epoxide would open this way. So the final product that I could expect would be CH3, CH with an OH, this is the epoxide opening. So that alcohol up there is the oxygen from the epoxide. CH2, which is the CH2 primary site that we had right over here, and then the chlorine that attached to it, okay? So that would be an example with primary and secondary only. So it could be two primaries, it could be a primary and a secondary, okay? But you're looking for the less hindered site, more of an SN2 type behavior. Now, what's going to happen if we end up with a tertiary site? So let's take another look or a revisit at this, but now we're simply gonna change that other hydrogen on the left-hand side to a methyl so that we can create a tertiary site. So what it would look like now is CH3, C, CH3. Here's our epoxide. And now we'll keep, let's keep this primary, okay, for a stark contrast. So we have tertiary over on the left, we have primary over on the right. So now, because of the tertiary site, you have greater hyperconjugation and you've got the ability to host partial positive buildup to a better uh, degree. And so if we were to run through the same reaction, this time the chloride is going to attack the tertiary site instead of the primary site. Okay, so instead of running through the mechanism again, we'll go ahead and we'll just give the product. So it would be CH3, and then the carbon that's present here has another CH3 attached to it. So we'll put that, CH3. And it was also the site of attack for the chloride because it was more substituted. So there's the CL. And then we still have a CH2 group. And in addition, the epoxide opened in the direction of the CH2. So this would become OH. All right. So take a look at this. Can you predict the product? This is how we're going to wrap up. So what I want you to do is take a minute look at it and see if you could predict what the outcome should be. Pause the video and come back, unpause it, and we'll show you. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try this. The correct answer here would be that you should put the chlorine over on the right-hand side and the OH should be over on the left-hand side. Now, the reason for that is that this is a primary site and this is a secondary site. So because there's no tertiary present with the epoxide, when we do the opening, the less hindered site will be the site of attack from the nucleophile. And that gives this product over here. 
So that concludes the lecture for the acid catalyzed epoxide opening. You have to be very careful in terms of determining which way your substitution patterns go regarding whether there's a tertiary there or not. So again, leave a like for the video if you found it helpful. If you comment, I'll try to get back to you. And as always, head on over to chemcomplete.com. We have assistance with lab report writing. If you're struggling, we can also help walk you through any difficulties you're having in the course. There's guides for sale over there. If you're getting ready to study, it's an easy way to support the channel. And of course, just watching us helps to support the channel as it is. So thank you for learning with us, and I will see everybody next time. Thank you.